For a downhill mountain bike racer, competing in the UCI World Cup Series is the absolute pinnacle of the sport. Riders from all corners of the globe will spend six months of the year on the road in pursuit of that elusive perfect race run that only the very best can win on any one day. There is no margin for error. For the Lafayette Gravity Republic team, they come into the new season off the back of an outstanding year in 2013. With 15 World Cup and World Championship podiums, four overall series medals and a junior World Cup win with the team finishing second overall in the standings. The only thing missing was an elite World Cup race win in the ultra-competitive men's category. In 2014, the pressure is on for the team's two elite riders, Sam Blankensop and Louis Bruni, to finally deliver that elusive first World Cup win. This is their dream. This is a life worth winning. Listen to this rhyming exhibition. I'm certain you ain't seen like an honest politician. This ain't just head hitting. A lot of pinched nerves are next are caused by bars that bless spitting. Wait, don't hate. I just move how I move. I can't describe what it is. I just do what I do. I am better than any rapper from here to wherever. And my legacy will harass my offsprings forever. I flow it right better than any. I'm the hottest. And trust me, that's not being conceited. That's being modest. I'm being honest. Pop up my collar. School of hard knocks. I graduated with honors. <laughs> I just do what I do. You see me? I just do what I do. I just do what I do. I don't know about you. I just do what I do. Check. I just do what I do. We started the project with Lapierre, with the two successful uh, riders. I started riding for Lapierre, powered by Saab Salomon, it was back then. Step by step, the team was beginning to find its place amongst the leading powers of the World Cup circuit. The main part for me, just because I was on Yiddy the year before, and it seemed a little bit more professional. I remember exactly the time I first met Sam and Cam. Oh, like, hello, I'm Loic. Uh, hey, Cam, I'm Loic. The two would switch overall places countless times through the season, culminating in a dramatic finale, which saw Bruni and Blenke finish fourth and fifth overall in the series. Confidence could not have been higher coming to the end of the year. The goal is uh, to be as fast as last season and uh, admit that we are looking for the top place for every race. We don't want to be arrogant, we don't want to... I want always fair win, you know, and I want always uh, riders to be kind with all the other riders, but for sure we are working for the win now. With the 2013 Downhill World Cup coming down to the very last race run of the season, 14 was one of the most hotly anticipated in the history of the sport. Tens of thousands of fans and spectators descend on the beautiful and often remote mountain locations all over the world for a chance to catch a glimpse of their heroes. To see what it has done in, you know, I guess 15 years is incredible. I don't know many sports that have progressed this fast in 15 years. You know, you can tell now, like, it's not just 10 or 15 or 20 dudes working, like, super hard, you know, and now it's 40, you know, or more, like, and the times on the tracks, they show that everything's just gone up another level. Riders have taken on the role of extreme sports superstars, with online coverage exploding in recent times, creating a whole new level of interest and in turn increasing the pressure to perform that's present in all athletes competing at a top level. Firstly, you have to come from yourself, you know. If like no one will make you perform if you don't want it anyway. When an uh, athlete doesn't uh, uh, you know, admit to the pressures of racing. It's kind of like sweeping it under the rug and it festers and it grows and it, it, it doesn't go away. I think most of the pressure has just comes from me, like no one else has, gives me any pressure. Laurent wants results. He doesn't come and say, oh, you better win today. No one's going to perform really well if someone comes and says that before you race, you know? I think that some people are watching me for, to see if if I am maybe a good rider or not. But uh, every year I felt that I had to improve and show that it wasn't one shot, you know. I don't race my bike to get like in the, in the top 10, you know, I'm not happy about it. I, I want to win races, like that's why I started racing, you know. I talk with the athletes and try and use that as energy because you can turn that pressure into something very positive.
Fort William, Scotland. Every year, the entire World Cup circus descends on this sleepy Scottish town for the biggest event on the race calendar. This year, the team is in the Scottish Highlands three weeks early, putting the final touches to a new prototype they hope to debut here at the World Cup. The second round of the British Downhill Series proves a perfect testing ground for the team to get some last-minute data, as well as allowing them to get some extra practice time before the World Cup comes to town. We have a, a new bike to, to try, and like, so we have a bit of thing and like, you know, to try and find the, the purpose set up and progressing for the for the race and especially for the World Cup. Today for the BDS we put tape everywhere to hide it because we don't really want people to see it. They all like love seeing like eh, tape bike, tape bike, but I think at the World Cup they will be like beautiful. And definitely when we tested the two bikes, the old one and this one, every time this one was faster, I think we're going to win some seconds, some precious ones. Three weeks pass and the venue is transformed into a mecca of mountain biking. What often seems like the entire mountain bike population of the UK crams into the finish area at the bottom of this classic course, where only the very best of man and machine can expect to leave with a good result. Today's been quite a big day for Lafayette. We've just presented to the press the new downhill bike. There's been a lot of work that's gone into it, numerous prototypes that have been produced, a huge amount of testing from all of the team riders, and obviously a great deal of work from Nico and from our engineers. Emmeline's going to be um, racing this weekend on her new frame. Unfortunately, the other riders, basically there were a few on team delays, um, and we couldn't get enough ready for them all in time. We are all disappointed about waiting the new one but we we have to stay focused on you know on the season and just ride a bike and ride it fast so all bike or new one just a matter of one second but if it, if we are strong mentally we can go faster with this one yeah it's good because it's like it's not just at the at the end or at the bottom it's like the on the the old track even at the start and people just like walking and walking and you can see them like sharing and hear them like they are crazy. <laughs> I like for William because God, it's a track I like and uh, and uh, yeah it was a big challenge because we received the bikes and uh, and uh, yeah it was a bit of pressure like because you know I was the only one on the team to ride with it and I want to do well and I have to do well. Attacking the course in her trademark aggressive style, Rago was able to withstand the heavy pressure and deliver Lapierre a maiden victory for the new bike in its first outing. Took the bike and she won. First race with the new bike and uh, World Cup win. It was good because it was the first time the bike, the new bike, um, came out and uh, and yeah, like first podium and first win. It was the target to have uh, the new bike on the podium and uh, we are on the top of the podium. And Emlyn, she made the job and uh, she made it perfectly. They were able to produce a really successful bike because uh, four win. We had uh, Loris winning Mary Bell and he was world champion with this bike and two World Cup wins uh, with uh, Emmeline. It just proved that all this work was not uh, for, for nothing. When you have a team and when all the people are flirting with the top two or three, and Emmeline, it's exactly the same case. I would say that it brings a lot of uh, uh, positive pressure on the others. She is uh, riding before the men and it gives something additional on a positive sign. To the, to, to the guys as well. For Loic Bruni, his younger years were spent looking up to Blenke as a superhero of the sport. But in 2013, the pendulum had already started to swing and the two would go head to head again in 2014. I feel a little bit different, you know, the relationship with Loic and Blenke. Now he's uh, together, he can win the World Cup, you know. Because of uh, they are competing, and they were, the two were able to be on the podium. For sure, the sport relation in the team when uh, we were working was a little bit different. It's an individual sport, then I totally understand this type of relation. They, they want to perform, they want the first place. Now it's like, like two brothers, like maybe sometimes we fought a little bit, sometimes we clash, and then sometimes you get pissed off, you know, because he's beating you or something. Just small things when you get pissed off with your sister or whatever, you know. Wait, I don't have the controller, but it's right behind you. I feel like it was more competition between them and you know even if they don't want it and even if they say no for sure no it's still my best friend or 
whatever. You can see it from outside for sure. But it's normal, you know, we are all like competitors and you know, we want the best. Be funny for, for me is uh, so difficult because it's too big friend, you know. But I can tell I bring in, you know, the thing and low it or a reverse or something like that. And, uh, I push 100% bank in, push 100% low and uh, after we see after the race, you know. When I was junior, I felt like I was his little brother, like really. I wasn't competitive for him, you know, I was just uh, like a small guy coming and on the races. And, and uh, when I came elite, like on every races, we had the same points. We were really close, so we were, oh, now, you know, I have to beat you. Uh, yeah, you have to beat me. So it was funny, but there, there were a little competition for everything, you know. We we're very good friends, but there's still a rivalry. It'd be the same for like Greg and, and, and Josh. It's like a young rider coming through and he's beating Greg now. You, you'd, be, you'd be pissed off a little bit. In sport, intense rivalries between two top athletes very often become bitter relationships and can threaten to destroy even the strongest friendships. But for Sam and Loic, this competition only seems to strengthen the bond that exists between two racers. Spending time together away from the track has become an important part of the season for both races. Ouais, ça, à quel niveau que ce soit, euh, je pense que c'est bon. Donc euh, voilà, avoir un ami, un confident, un, un modèle avec qui on, on fait la course en plus de faire la course avec tous les autres, euh, ça peut être que bon pour les deux. They generally en, you know, enjoy each other's company and I think that's good because I think they remove ego and I think that's a real important quality and they realize again that may the best man win and they're not focused on each other. If anything, there's more strength in learning from each other and that way they're both going to grow more as a rider than sitting in their separate corners of the, of the pit. I think we both help each other and we are better men and better riders. It's funny how things happen, you know, like he was like a big fan of me and then now I'm like a fan of him because he's such a like amazing fella and like good rider and good friend of me. We always want the best for each other, you know. So it was uh, like a rich, like a richness, you know. To have Blinky in a team, it's like uh, being rich. Leergang in the epic Austrian Alps was the setting for round four of the World Cup series. After his second place finish in 2013 for Bruni, this was a race marked in his calendar since the start of the season is his best chance of grabbing his first ever World Cup victory. Approaching the race with a free mind and full of confidence, Bruni seemed to be on another level compared to everyone else. With last year's winner and World Cup champion Steve Smith struggling with injury, could Bruni deliver the team and himself a maiden victory? Cool track, looks really good to ride, so I don't know, I like the track, I like the place. The place likes me, so I count on this one. Yeah, I think indirectly I put a little bit of pressure because uh, I always been pretty good here. I just need to be smart, you know. It had already been a turbulent season for Bruni, having crashed out in Australia whilst green at the first split and recording a disappointing 12th place finish in Fort William. But with a fourth place podium finish already under his belt at the first race in South Africa, this was the perfect time to return to the place which gave him his best ever World Cup result. The pressure on young shoulders was already high and the team had to work hard to keep expectations from the media and the fans to a minimum so Bruni could focus on what could be the biggest race of his life so far. Yeah, a lot of people is, uh, is looking for the win for, for Loic and I think he's too young for the moment to be efficient with this type of feedback, you know. A lot of the people is saying, yeah, yeah, you're very fast, you're very fast, but the result is not the training, you know. Yeah, looks good, but the result is just after the race, you know. It's really hard to win because I didn't, I never did. But for sure, this track is cool and the place is cool too. So last year I went second. The next step is first. Bruni was in great form as focus shifted to the Saturday qualifying session. A win here would only add to his confidence and set a marker for everyone else to follow. 
For the first time in his career, he knew that here was a course where no other rider could get close to his level of speed and performance. I think it's uh, his first win in, uh, in Quali. He worked a lot for that. He has to push because you're a win, you, you always have to push. And uh, I think he's able to, uh, to be consistent and uh, really efficient with a big push and with a, with a big uh, aggressivity on the bike, he's able to win. Yeah, he watched uh, the, the Troy win and uh, for sure it was, it's kind of a contest with Troy because he's uh, one year older and uh, he wants to follow and pass Troy now. Yeah, it's always a, a good motivation uh, when, uh, when you have somebody chasing, uh, chasing you or you chase somebody for maybe for four years now, then uh, it's always good to have, uh, to have this kind of example. Sunday, race day. For every downhill racer, this is the point that they will work towards all year. For Bruni to get a result, he would need to be at the top of his game in every aspect. A strong racer relies on a strong head, and there are no hiding places on the mountain for the last man down the hill. What are you doing? Some race on the motocross. Yeah. I won. <laughs> How you feeling? I feel good. Relaxed? Uh, yeah, I have to. Uh, I feel less, like a little bit nervous still, but it's race day so it's normal. And yeah, just, just don't think about too much, you know, being the last one. Um, Try to use it as your advantage. Yeah. I don't know, just don't think about it, you know. And what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, yeah. So it's it's already written, you know. <laughs> I really felt, you know, when you're sure about something, I felt that uh, it was gonna happen. Then I, I was thinking, okay, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And I said, okay, I will tell. To the coach that it's gonna happen. Hey coach, it's for us, that one. You damn it, man! We all know that there's obviously a certain amount of strength that that is required, but you need to have a balance in your body, and you find a way where your human body is performing at its best power output. Everyone's working on small details, I think everyone's so close, like you can be in the top 10 and you only be what, a second off the podium. With teammate Loic Bruni already at the finish and looking set for a top 10 result, the pressure was on to beat him and step back onto a World Cup podium for the first time since Norway in 2013.